Hello and welcome to our Palm Sunday worship. Can you hear it? It's my singing stone. No, you can't hear it? Well, you're probably not the only one. But this is Palm Sunday. And of course, it's the time when the crowds welcome Jesus with their singing and their shouts of joy. Hosanna, Hosanna to the Son of David. And in the same way, you and I are called to welcome him with joy into our own lives. But what about this singing stone? Well, if you listen carefully in our service today, you'll hear Jesus talking about that. But for now, let's get our palm branches out or the palms of our hands and join those crowds to sing our own joyful hosannas. Shout for joy, you people of Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey. Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Come into our community, Lord. Bring hope and a cause for joy. Hosanna to the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Come into our church, Lord. Cleanse it of all that is not in accordance with your will. Hosanna to the King, who comes in the name of the Lord. Come into our lives, Lord. Fill us with your love and joy. Hosanna to the King, who comes in the name of the Lord. Lord Jesus, as you entered into Jerusalem and its temple, so come to us that we may be a holy people, worthy of your presence, bringing glory to your name. Amen. Various verses taken from chapters 11 and 12 in the book of Nehemiah. Now the leaders of the people settled in Jerusalem. The rest of the people cast lots to bring one out of every ten of them to live in Jerusalem, the holy city, while the remaining nine 
were to stay in their own towns. The people commanded all who volunteered to live in Jerusalem. At the dedication of the wall of Jerusalem, the Levites were sought out from where they lived and were brought to Jerusalem to celebrate joyfully the dedication with songs of thanksgiving and with the music of cymbals, harps and lyres. The squires sang and on that day they offered great sacrifices, rejoicing because God had given them great joy. The women and children also rejoiced. The sound of rejoicing in Jerusalem could be heard far away. Today's reading is from John chapter 16, verses 16 to 20. Jesus said, In a little while you'll see me no more, and then after a little while you'll see me. At this, some of his disciples said to one another, What does he mean? Jesus saw that they wanted to ask him about this, so he said to them, Are you asking one another what I mean when I said, In a little while you'll see me no more, and then after a little while you'll see me? Truly I tell you, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. After a woman gives birth to a child, she forgets the pain because of her joy that the child is born into the world. So if you, now is your time of grief, but I will see you again and you will rejoice. And no one will take away your joy. Anybody fancy a go on the roller coaster? Come on. I've actually been on that roller coaster. It's the big one at Blackpool Pleasure Beach and it's the tallest Big Dipper roller coaster in the UK. It makes the Dipper at Barry's look a bit like a toddler's toy. It can be really exciting to go on the roller coaster but it takes a wee bit of courage too when it's as high as that or maybe stupidity is the word. It's certainly good for your prayer life. So as soon as the lockdown is over, I'm booking a trip for us all to go to Blackpool and to go on the big one. And the front seat is reserved for Roberta and Melanie. We sometimes talk about life as being a roller coaster ride. It can sometimes feel like that. Sometimes you feel you're on top of the world and everything's going well. And at other times you can be on a bit of a diner and there'll be plenty of those over this past year. Jesus' journey to Jerusalem, I think, was a bit like that. It starts with him on a high up at the top as Jesus rides into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. And all the people are out welcoming him. They're all shouting Hosanna, an exclamation of their joy. They're just so happy that this new king had come to save them. Let's try and imagine today what it would be like to have been part of that crowd as we watch a dramatised version of the story prepared by our own jam children with a little bit of help from the Play It By Ear Theatre Company. The sort of person who'll go around making a racket, I always know. They don't call me a librarian's best friend for nothing. Derek, oh. is oh. that you? What are you doing out here oh. making such a commotion? A commotion? Me? It wasn't me. It, it was that lot. They're making the commotion. Particularly that one. Yeah, I've got my eye on you. Yeah. Sorry about that, everyone. He's a bit wound up at the minute. You see, we're part of the Neighbourhood Watch. Maybe we could get all of these people here to help us with our inquiries. How about we tell them what happened? Fine, we'll do that, okay? All right, everyone. It started, well, about a week ago. I was just doing my crossword, as you know, I do every, every week, and when suddenly I, I heard this, this noise, I couldn't work out where it was coming from, but I spied out my window, and then I saw them, a big crowd, cheering. <laughs> Yeah! 
and they were waving pans. Yeah! Pams, Dave, we've been over this before. They were waving palm branches. Oh, my bad, Derek, my bad. Although I am right in thinking some of them were laying their boats on the street, weren't they? Coats, Dave. They were laying coats on the street for that Jesus fella. Yeah! That makes more sense. Although, not that much more sense. Why on earth were they laying their coats on the ground? Dave, it's like I said, it was for that Jesus. It was a sign of respect. Oh yes, that's right. And they were shouting all sorts as well, weren't they? Oh yes. Yes, that was it. And, and what was the other one? Uh, yes, it is he who he comes who comes in the name of the Lord. And I think I even heard some people shouting. Hosanna to your son of David. Hosanna to your son of David. Absolute nonsense if you ask me, Dave. People thinking this Jesus was a messiah riding into town on a donkey. He's hardly going to lead the charge against the Romans, is he? On a donkey. I don't know about that, Derek. I thought there was something special <laughs> about him. Well, the religious leaders certainly didn't think so. They were furious with him. Do you remember what they said? This is terrible. I can't believe what I'm hearing. This is disgraceful. Come on, Jesus. Your followers can't say things like that. Jesus didn't care about their religious leaders complaining about him. Oh no, he didn't. He just turned around and he said, if the crowds keep quiet, then the stones will cry out instead. <laughs> the stones, they the stones. They didn't know what to do. <laughs> they weren't the only ones. I didn't have a clue. Honestly, I was at a loss. I could not get rid of this crowd. You know, I tried to drive them off with the old stick, you know, a couple of whacks. But they, they didn't care. And then I got a big bucket of water out and I tried to soak them, but they wouldn't budge. It was only when that Jesus moved on that we finally got a bit of, well, a bit of normality around here. I don't know if normality is quite the right word, Derek. Oh, no. You see, Jesus, he was all over Jerusalem. He was saying amazing things. He was doing the most unbelievable miracles. It was incredible. Yes, yes, yes. But more importantly, he stayed away from our street and we could finally get some peace and quiet. Well, at least till the end of the week anyway. Thank you, that was great. And it gives us a real sense of what it must have been like for Jesus. Like being on top of the roller coaster as all the crowds rode in behind him. But of course it's not too long before things are on a downer for him again. Just a few days later, the crowd would be crying out for Jesus to be crucified. He'd be weeping in the Garden of Gethsemane at the thought of going to the cross. He would be betrayed by some of his closest friends. So then there would be the whipping and the agony that he faced as he died. Amazingly, in the middle of all this, Jesus chooses to talk to his disciples about joy. Yes, he told them about the pain that he would have to suffer. But he also spoke about joy. I want my joy to be in you, is what he said. And even, even though he had all this pain to go through, he also had this amazing peace and a deep down joy through it all. I really love the Bible story about Paul and Silas. And I don't know if you remember, one day they, they set this slave girl free. And instead of being thanked for doing that, the man who owned the girl had them thrown into jail. Now, if it had been me, I'd, I'd been really feeling sorry for myself. But not Paul and Silas. Instead, they sang hymns, hymns of praise and of joy in their prison cell. Imagine that. And their joy in the Lord led to them being set free as the prison doors opened at the sound of their praise. And not only them, but their jailer as well. Paul and Silas had the same joy that Jesus had. I think most of us would love to have that kind of joy, 
or, or love to have a bit more of it. After our next bit of drama, we'll find out how we can do that. And this drama reminds us of the things that Jesus did suffer for us. It's the end of the week when the crowds came back, although they weren't cheering this time, were they, Derek? They oh were no, awesome. they weren't cheering, they were booing. It wasn't nice, was it, Derek? No. And I tell you, I couldn't believe it when I realised they were angry with Jesus of all people. I mean, who knew a crowd could turn so quickly? Well, the religious leaders, they, they hardly helped matters, did they? They, they went around whispering in the crowd's ears and, and really riling them up. Mm. Jesus is a troublemaker. Do you hear what he's saying? He's a liar. They say he's planning a rebellion. The Son of God? That's what he said? How dare he? Something's got to be done. Did you hear, Derek, that it was one of his own followers who betrayed him? Apparently he led the guards right to him. Aye, and then they dragged him to, to some religious court and then off to Pilate. That, that's the Roman governor in charge around this place. And Pilate, he could understand why the crowd was so upset. I don't understand. This man has done nothing wrong. He's a troublemaker! Get rid of him! Crucify him! Pilate didn't know what to do, did he, Derek? No. He didn't think Jesus was guilty, but he also didn't want to anger the crowd. No, so then, well then he had a brilliant idea. He decided that he would offer up a prisoner to be freed. You can either have Barabbas or Jesus. Tell Pilate we want Barabbas! Let's hear you! Barabbas! I mean, Barabbas, he had done some terrible things, whereas Jesus, all he did was help people. You're right, Dave. I think it's safe to say Pilate's plan had backfired. He had had enough. I wash my hands of this. Do what you want with this, Jesus. And the crowd, they wanted him killed. The Roman guards, they whipped him and dragged him through the streets. Bad business. Bad business indeed. And all the while the crowds, they jeered and mocked Jesus. They nailed him to the cross and he hung there between two common thieves. He didn't deserve that, Dave. I know I said he was a nuisance, but he never did anything to deserve that sort of punishment. There was an odd feeling all over the city when he was there hanging on that cross. Like somehow everyone knew a terrible thing was being done. And the oddest thing happened when he died. The whole city went dark. Never seen anything like it. Aye, it was unsettling all right. There were odd reports coming in all day about strange things happening over town. But eventually it went back to normal and the peace and quiet returned. Just the way I like it. Thanks again. And it's amazing, isn't it, how Jesus went through all that and yet he still had this deep down joy and his trust in God, his Father. And we can as well. Let's get back to Nehemiah though for a moment. We've been learning all about Nehemiah during Lent and how he and his people rebuilt the walls of Jerusalem. In spite of all sorts of setbacks, they, they completed the task. And in today's reading, we heard about a great celebration that they had then. It says the singers sang, they offered sacrifices and they rejoiced, for God made them rejoice with great joy. Can you imagine, you know, like when your favourite football team score the winning goal? It must have been a bit like that for these people in Jerusalem. And I think the really important thing we see here is that it says that God made them rejoice. Now, that doesn't mean he forced them to be happy. It meant that he put joy in their hearts, that, that this joy was a gift to each one of them. And you know, when you and I trust Jesus, he gives us that same gift. He gives us a joy that's like no other joy. It says here that God gave these people in Jerusalem great joy. It wasn't just a tiny wee bit of joy. It was a great joy. 
I don't know if you can think of a really happy time in your life, maybe a birthday or when your football team win the cup as Liverpool did last year or when you got married or when you started school or probably when you finished school. A really happy day. Well, the joy that God gives is greater even than that joy. And it's also a lasting joy because Jesus says, I can give you a joy that no one can take away from you. And this is the joy that Jesus himself had. A joy that he wants to give you and me whatever we might be going through. I can remember once when I was going through a really hard time in my life, there was just one tough thing after another. And I remember a friend of mine praying with me and he prayed that God would not let my joy be taken away. And as he prayed that I felt this great peace and this great joy just flowing over me. And a few days after that, another friend of mine came up to me and he says, That's Paul, I don't know how you can have such joy in your life when all these things are happening to you. But you know, it was just Jesus doing what he promised that he would do. He said, ask and you shall receive and your joy will be complete. And that's all any of us have to do. We have to make sure that Jesus is in our lives and just ask him to fill us with his wonderful gift of joy. Even when life is a really tough roller coaster ride. Then when we have this joy, what we have to do is to share it. And that's what Nehemiah and his people did. It says that the joy of Jerusalem was heard far away. In other words, all the, the nations around Jerusalem, they heard the people celebrating what God had done for them. And when they heard the people's joy, they knew that God was real. And they wanted to know this God for themselves. You know, it's been a real roller coaster ride for many of us during this pandemic. And I think that a lot of people will be now looking for some joy in their lives when it ends. I wonder where they find it. I wonder will they just go back to doing the same things they did before. Maybe that would be good. But I wonder will they be able to see a better joy in us, in the people of St. Canisys, the way that others could see a joy in those people in Jerusalem? Are we ready to be so filled with the joy of the Lord that we just have to share it with one another and let it spill out into the lives of many people around us? Wouldn't that be great? Now the last bit of our drama shows us how the first followers of Jesus shared their joy whenever they discovered that Jesus was alive. Wait, wait, Derek, do you hear that? Do you hear that, Derek? What? what is that noise? He's alive! He's alive! Jesus is alive! Right, that's it. Dave, I've had enough. That is a clear violation of the noise regulations 32, which clearly wait, states... Wait, Derek, Derek, will you be quiet? Slow down. What are you talking about? Tim, it's empty. Jesus is alive! That's not possible. The men guarding Tim has probably just moved his body. Wait a second. Jesus did say he would rise again. He did? He's alive! He's alive! He's alive! He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. Would you look at that, Dave? Look at that! They are quite clearly running through his own march, walking only. Walking only, Dave. This this is a disaster. A disaster? Yes! A disaster, Derek. Are you serious? For goodness sake, have you not been listening to any of this? If Jesus is alive, that means all of his miracles, well, they weren't just cheap tricks. But instead, it means that he was telling the truth all along when he said that he was the Son of God and that he had come to show us the way. This, this is most certainly not a disaster. In fact, Derek, this is the best day ever. Come on, we have to go and tell people all about it. Come on, Derek. You're right, Dave. I'm, I'm right behind you. Just like, 
I need to finish the wee log book here now. Uh, let me see uh, what will I put down. Oh, I need to make sure I, I have a clear note of the running disturbance. Yes, let me just add that in. Or yes, now and then the. Oh, who cares? This is too big a deal. I've got to go and tell everyone. Jesus, Jesus is alive. Oh. I want to say a big thank you to the Jam children, to their leaders and parents who helped them prepare for today. You were just great. But what about that singing stone that I mentioned at the start of the service? Well, whenever Jesus entered Jerusalem that Palm Sunday, there were some people who didn't want the crowds and the disciples to sing their joyful hosannas. The religious leaders didn't like it one bit, and they told them to stop. But what Jesus said was this, that if they stay quiet, then these stones will sing instead. Imagine that, singing stones, stones that sing the praise of Jesus. And wouldn't it be a terrible pity if the stones could sing his praise and you and I couldn't. So let's turn to God in our prayers and ask that that doesn't happen. Will you pray with me? Lord God, we are sorry that we have relied on other things to bring us joy. Please forgive us. Thank you that Jesus died for us and rose again to bring us peace and hope and joy. Please fill us with your gift of joy, the joy that lasts forever. And let your joy flow out from us to others. In Jesus' name. Amen.
Dear God, as we celebrate on this Palm Sunday, help us to remember that that day when all the adults and children waved palm branches and cheered as Jesus entered Jerusalem as King. We know Jesus rose from the dead and is alive. Help us to remember that he is our wonderful King and that we can praise him every day. In Jesus' name, Amen. Jesus, you are good and wise. I will praise you when I rise. Jesus, hear this prayer I send. Bless my family and my friends. Jesus, help my eyes to see all the good you send to me. Jesus, help my ears to hear calls from help far and near. Jesus, help my feet to go in the way that you will show. Jesus, help my hands to do all things loving, kind and true. Jesus, guard me through this day in all I do and all I say. Amen. Father God, I thank you for everything you've done for me. I thank you for my family and my friends. I thank you that you love me so much that you sent your son Jesus for me. Amen. Father, we thank you for providing for our needs. Help us to be aware when others are having problems. Show us how to get involved and give us the strength and courage to help when things get hard. Amen. Father God, please be with me today and everything I will face, help me to learn well at school. I pray that I would be a good friend to those around me today. Amen. Thank you for those prayers. We pray together now saying, thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the pains and insults you have borne for us, for all the blessings you have won for us. Holy Jesus, most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more dearly, day by day. Amen. And we join together in the family prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May Christ give you grace to deny yourself, to take up your cross and to follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and all the people you love, wherever they may be, now and always. Amen. During this coming week, you'll be getting a copy of Envision and our magazine and a few other bits and pieces. And one of the things you will get is also a pledge card. As we've been thinking about Nehemiah, one of the things that Nehemiah and his people did was that they pledged themselves anew to serve God and his people. And as we think of rebuilding our church and our lives and our community in the coming days, I'm gonna ask you to consider if you would like to renew your commitment to serving God as well. So please have a look out for that and return it to us. It will give us a sense of being a strong people of God as we move forward. Our church will be reopening for live worship this coming Friday, Good Friday at half past 10 for a short service for that special day. And then again on Sunday, Easter Sunday, when we celebrate the risen Lord. Do book if you'd like to come just to make sure that we can get everybody in.
clap your hands Clap 